We've dominated the first half of the season, only dropping two points. With just the 73 goals from our two strikers so far this season. Beating finalists last season, our main focus is our Champions League tie against Inter Milan. We are getting huge bids for Jordi come through of up to £82 million. And January we took our first loss of the season to Athletic Bilbao. No need to panic though, the two striker tactic is still performing well. I believe fixture congestion just got the better of us there. But our boys Ross and Sesco are still scoring plenty. Although Sesco will miss a few games now, meaning Jordi or even Eric Felipe can step up. But I had a busy deadline day bringing in three 18 year old players that my scouts had found since the summer window, all rated at 5 star potential and all for the cost of around 20 million. I also received a loan to buy offer for Akamak for around 22 million, which I thought was acceptable and a good time for his departure. And it pays for the three we've just brought in. And then he rejected the offer. Never mind. Approaching the Champions League tie with Inter, we've hit a weird spell, dropping two points late against Elche. And Sevilla eliminating us from the Copa del Rey. From Luka Jovic capitalizing on Araujo's mistake for not dealing with the long ball, who ironically then is complaining to his teammates for not winning the domestic cup. What? Into Milan then. We are missing Ramon Mas and Gavi through injury. But we are still going to rock the two up top to see how we go with Ross and Sesco up there and Ansu Fati who's been banging the goals too from the left. Vicente from the right and Pedri through the middle. Nico slots in at DM and in defence Francisco Carlos shoots to the right to fill in for Mas. It's a position he can still play naturally despite being 6'6 six six with 20 jumping reach. The deadlock was broken when Sesco intercepted a throw in to find Jordan Ross who also scored the second from the spot. And the game finished 2-1 when single cross for Salamiakas. A good result at the Giuseppe Miazza. An 8-0, a 3-1 and a 7-2 followed this game, with the second leg being followed by El Clasico. Second leg, I went to the classic 4-3-3 to pack out the midfield. We struggled in the last game, so let's just be sensible. And it was a smart move. We dominated the game and took the lead through Ross, who popped up at the back post to score a second, before Pedri found space to fire in a third. El Clasico and we revert back to the two up top with some changes down the left to freshen up some legs and the return of Ramon Mas. Pedri kicked things off with a screamer. Jordi then got the second and Real Madrid finally woke up, but Jordi got on the end of a tackle and we took the game by the throat again when Sesco chipped the goalkeeper. Ramon Mas scored an own goal to make it 4-2, but Sesco got his second and we take the three points. From one Milan team to the other as we draw AC Milan in the quarterfinals and both Manchester teams draw each other meaning we definitely can't play both teams again this season. Thank God. Three more big wins and 16 goals scored, let's head to the quarterfinals. And again, we rock the classic 4-3-3 to try and control the midfield to give Jordan Ross the rest on the bench alongside Jordi. Reason is because they also play 4-3-3, so I trusted our ability and we scored through Carlos in just 13 minutes. Pedri doubled our lead through an unreal free kick. And Sesco's desire was amazing on the hour mark to make it three. Milan did score when a shot ricocheted off the bar into the second for an own goal, but it was still a good result. But on the 12th of April, we were already crowned champions without even playing on that day. And that was due to Elche's 91st minute winner over Real Madrid. 19 points clear with a game in hand and 6 still to play. Second leg of the Champions League and we see the 4-2-3-1 return. And it took just 12 minutes for Jordan Ross to score and put us 4-1 up on aggregate. Ansu Fati then scored on the 28th and the 29th minute and the tie was all but done. A 5-1 win in the end and an 8-2 win on aggregate puts us into the semi-final against Chelsea, led by Nico Kovac. Being away from home, I went with a 4-3-3 again to try and control the midfield, bringing Gavi back to join Pedri and Nico, with Ross given the nod up top. And in a tight contest, Ben Worrell scored the only goal of the first leg. Second leg, I went with the two up top. I think we can overrun their 4-4-2 tactic at home. Chelsea, though, they scored four goals. Not good. We did score two, though. Vicente got the first, and at 4-2 down, Sesco scored late. And on the 82nd minute, Pedri equalised on aggregate to take it to extra time. But with the very last kick of the game, in the 120th minute, Benjamin Sesco stepped up and scored and sent us through to back-to-back -to -back Champions League finals. And of course, it's our old foes, Liverpool, who awaits us. Manage by Jurgen Klopp still. We ended the season on weird form, drawing 1-1, losing 1-0, and then winning 9-0 on the last game of the season. Winning our fifth 
championship in a row on 99 points as well as Jordan Ross scoring 51 goals. Not bad at all for a 22 year old. This is also to Stegen's final game in football as he prepares for his retirement. And Liverpool are expected to run a 4-3-3 as well with Yusuf and Makuku sat up top. So we look to match that 4-3-3 with a 4-3-3 of our own. Ross getting the nod up top, which I do feel bad for Sesko for sure. Vicente and Fati on the wings and in the midfield, Pedri, Gavi and Nico. Balde on the left, Ramon Mas on the right with Francesco and Worrell at the back ahead of Testegen. The best assist I've seen helped us open the scoring when Vicente backheeled the ball into the box to Pedri. Liverpool came back and equalised before half-time through Chiesa, but the second half we came at them again, and before long, Ansu Fati scored a fantastic shot off the bar to make it 2-1, but there was still time for one more. And of all the players, it was Serginho Dest who broke through and chipped the goalkeeper to make it 3-1, and just like that, we are champions of Europe. Now, although this isn't the end of the series, we have achieved a big goal in the youth to go journey. And we actually ended a seven year reign of English clubs winning the competition as well. Two things here, we've jumped up in reputation to five stars, which is exactly what we need, but also how the hell is Jordan Ross not in the top five most shirts sold at the club? He scored 62 goals in a season with a two striker formation. Now it was a great season, but with a quarter final exit of the Copa del Rey, it wasn't perfect. We've cracked the top four of the world reputation rankings and there's still £288 million of debt left. So there's still a job here to be done. So don't go anywhere just yet. Now I get a lot of comments like this from Joe asking how I get all of the world-class talents that I managed to bring in. And like I mentioned in the reply, I don't tend to show the players that flop. Signing the amount of players that I do means that some of these players slip through the cracks and never amount to a profit or a first-team spot. Kind of like Jason Van Doeven, a big L. And even this season, Eric Felipe, who's leaving on a free transfer because he didn't get any game time. The important thing is that you tip the scale in your favor with the successful ones that you sell for a profit or continue to do this for a number of years. As for how I find the players, every month or two, I check the scouted players from my assignments. And every six months, I do some attribute searching where I pick a couple of attributes per position and look for interesting talents. Kind of like this Israeli player I found through attribute searching. Turns out my scouts already looked at him, but I must have missed him. It's such a low transfer offer accepted that I go for it knowing that I can just sell him on for more. Or Valenzuela, a fantastic looking striker from Mexico who cost me just less than £2 million. Adesina hands in his transfer request. Quest. He's a great player, but we've got Jane Vicente in his position and he costs us just £1 million and could turn a huge profit for us. And wouldn't you know, Milan came in for £53 million. Many transfers happening, but Ronald Arojo for £38.5 billion is a notable one at age 31. Coming back from loans, we have some unreal players like Goitea, as well as Diego, who was on loan at Bayern Munich. Squad depth-wise, we are already looking great outside of that one goalkeeper. With Tostegan's retirement, Mora is my favourite to replace him as an 18-year-old simply because of the concentration, low eccentricity and aerial ability. Again, contract rejected, Erosia stays for now. UEFA Super Cup time and we face Spurs. Jordan Ross scores the first two goals and we cap off the 3-0 win with Vicente beautifully chipping the goalkeeper. Our opening games are interesting with Batiste, Real Madrid away and the Catalan rivals Espanyol right after. Problem though, we only have a maximum of three foreign players and there's five players in there that I wanted to register. So I need to find some low moves for some players. Sesco kicked off the season well when he scored all four of the goals in the game as we beat Batiste 4-0. So the early El Clasico. And we were brilliant, being 4-0 up at one point, winning 5-2. A difficult group, however, as we are joined by Chelsea, Lazio and Monaco in the Champions League. The transfer deadline day passes and we say our goodbyes to Ansu Fati. He's at the prime age to sell during the youth to go method and he is talented, but we do have new younger talents who have already overtaken him. He only made 14 starts last year because of Geordie, means his value has dropped and with the wages above 400k, it was a good time to sell for 35 million with Goita and Diego snapping at his heels. Akamak joins him as he leaves this summer with a lot of loans going out as well. And we have signed eight players this year so far for the cost of one of those departures, constantly making profits through the transfers. And this is exactly how the youth to gold is at its best. The first team looks pretty small, but plenty of players in the B team that can help support. And after smacking Espanyol 5-1, let's speed run the first half of the season. 
Highlights of this first half was a fantastic victory against Atletico Madrid, where goals were flying in from all positions of the pitch as we go on and win the game 4-0 as well as a 5-0 away win at Villarreal. We had a rough patch, however, where we have drawn five times in just nine games. But with no losses, we are still unbeaten in La Liga. Our Champions League defence campaign started with a 4-2 win against Chelsea, and we topped our group unbeaten too, drawing only one of those games to Chelsea, 1-1. But guess who we've drawn in the first round? Antonio Conte Spurs again. And we'll continue to find out how we play against the Europa League winners in the next episode. If that's out, I'll pop it up on the screen right now. But if not, enjoy this one, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.